17. Huh? 17. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Move More Falls Prevention Program that we are delivering digitally. I'm Helen Tite. I'm the founder of I Care I Move. And normally you hear my voice behind the scenes. You don't always see me in front of camera unless I'm doing some kind of strange robot or thingy moves as I skulk past the camera. So Pat's away at the moment, so I'm filling her spot. What you'll experience is exactly the same information as you would do from Pat. This is week 17 on the programme. Now, at this point, we will have assumptions in place. So firstly, there is that health and safety aspect to make sure there are no um, trip hazards around you, that you use a little bit of common sense if you feel overwhelmed um, please share um, or just rest out. You don't have to do everything. Do what is important and feels good for you. Here's another thing. If you've been coming here a long time, it's about exercise progression. And what we want to avoid always is uh, a reduction. So we want to see you either stay in the same or improvement. What we don't want to see is a decline. So that's why it's so important to keep practicing and to keep working on your homework. So without further ado, when I talk about those assumptions, we always, always start with a warm up. We will assume today that many of you can get up and stand. If you need to rest, because the weather can play um, its part in our performance. And um, if you're distracted because of the football, I'm very sorry about that. But it's one hour. I've got your attention. Let's go. So in a seated position or standing position, the first thing I want to address is your posture. So many of us tend to or lose our postural shape as we age it is a natural part of the aging process but we want you nice and upright. How does that feel upright? Pat talks about neutral stance, neutral alignment. To stand upright, we think about beautiful tall posture. We think feet in line with knees, knees in line with hips. We think about drawing up nice and tall and shoulders back and down. If you are in a seated position, also, self-supporting spine, scooch forward in your seat with a tall, long back and your shoulders away from the back of the chair. Once we've got you there, let's think about mobilizing you and warming up your muscles. Let's start with a small thing like a shoulder roll. I prefer shoulders up, back and down. So forward, up, back and down forward, up, back and down. Now I'm gonna be switching from sit and stand. You choose your levels. I will adapt everything for sit and for stand. So we're rolling shoulders. Let's see if we can do elbows as well. So not only are the shoulders rolling, but the elbows are starting to lift. Some of you might find that a challenge. So we will go for one elbow at a time. Perfectly reasonable all about finding adaptations that are suitable and appropriate for you. Using your breath. Because straight away when we go from inactive to active, what you may experience is a sense of breathlessness and that is okay. Right, lovely. Let's think about lifting the heels or pumping the feet. In stand, the knee is involved, the hips are moving, arms always happen to fall into place. The more your arms move, the more your legs move. We are trying to warm you up and prep you for the session ahead. So the toes remain on the ground, we are lifting the heels only. Work to your pace. When I deliver this, I've got loads of tunes that go in my head. <laughs> So forgive me, um, as a Welsh girl, the shame on me that I no longer have. Well, I never could sing, so don't ask me to sing. It just might come out by accident. What I will do is witter on because it's quite distracting and you forget that you have energy. Okay, so this is all about mobilising, warming up. 
and getting the body ready. Stand in a wide base of support. Equally do that in sit. Feet nice and wide. We're looking for a flex at the waist. Now, to do this without putting too much pressure on the back, we think about tension on through your center. And a nice tip here is to breathe out on the lift, breathe in on the lower, breathe out on the lift, lower. In a little while, I'll start talking to you about the pelvic floor and your core muscles that connect to balance as well. So wide base of support, wider, you're more stable, narrower, less stable. So we want you nice and wide so you feel secure and stable. Lovely. Okay, modifying. So left hand, front left knee, right hand, back, right knee. So slide on the front of one thigh and the back of the other thigh. So we go forward and back. It doesn't have to be fast or onerous. It just needs to be more than what you currently do. That's all we ask. Okay, right hand. Right hand, front, right knee. Back hand, left hand, back, left knee. Front, right, back, left. Front, right, back, left. Good job. Uh, Good, 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 good. Okay, and in stand, always when we talk about stand, use the wall, use something to hold on to if you feel unsteady on your feet. What I'm looking for is a rotation because I really need to get that back nice and warm. And what I'm looking for here are shoulders pointed in one direction and then to the other. A nice way to do that is put your hands like a Cossack in front of you, little rotation. As we sweep to the left and sweep to the um, to the right, if you feel again, it's all about adapting movement. I like to also take my hands to the opposite corners of the chair. I'm still rotating. I'm still looking away. I'm still warming up those muscles that surround my bones in my back. Lovely. Okay, so let's think about the hands. Let's do some like little flashy lights with the hands. Okay, wiggle, index fingers, um, baby fingers come up and then go. So a little bit of fine motor skills going on here too. Um, recognizing that some of us really struggle with pain in our hands, including me. And then think um, thumb onto fingernails, thumb onto middle fingernails, onto um, ring fingers and then baby fingers and then come back. So plan a little bit of pressure, a little bit of pressure in that movement. Am I going into that one instead? Okay, okay. Entwine your fingers and give yourself a bit of a rub like we do with cold hands, because later on we'll be using the band. Okie dokie, okie Right, so, so far we've thought about tall spine, shoulders back and down, warming up the back. We've thought about some lateral movement, so lateral flexion of the spine, some rotations of the spine. As we move down, I'm looking at hip touchdown. So hip flexion. So with the movement, one knee up and down, up and down. And what I want is the knee to come up rather than the chest to come down, okay? So up and down. You can see I'm using the chair for a bit of support. That's okay. The important thing is I am getting some mobility into the top of the hip joint. Switch sides, here we go. Up and down, up and down. Recognizing the hips are targets when we get older get sore, they're uncomfortable. That's okay, I understand that. So we are looking to repeat this enough to lubricate the joint. So the joint, in spite of um, popular belief, it is important where there's arthritis, it is important to keep moving around that joint to lubricate, keep it warm. The more the muscles are working, the more we can take load and strain out of the joint and reduce pain. Okay, well done, lovelies. So we are now in that place um, 
where I want us to do a figure of eight with the hips. So if you're in stand, this is what we're doing, a figure of eight, okay? And see if we can make this um, a whole person movement rather than right side, left side. See if we can make it seamless. If you're in sit, and I know Barbara, you're watching, new key, right? If you're in sit, I want you to hip shuffle to the front of your chair and then hip shuffle to the back of your chair until your back is on the back of the chair. So hip shuffle forward, like you've got a bit of wind. In stand, it's a hip circle. Now, I don't know about you, but um, often it's here, we're feeling it into the small of the back and it can be a little bit uncomfortable. We do need to mobilize around it. It's a joint that doesn't like to be moved much. So we need to get it going. Okay, well done. So now in stand behind chair, I want you to step back, step forward, step back and forward. The reason we're doing this is a shift of body weight. Why? This is us at home, boss in. So step back and point, that helps. Step back and point. Shifting of weight. Shifting of weight and moving. Pointing, looking, turning your head. All of this is connected. All of this is relative when we are addressing preventing falls. You keep going. I'm sipping my hot drink because I've done nothing but talk since the crack of dawn. Beautiful. Okay. Here's the change. Keep your weight forward. Just stretch back. So all I'm doing is sending my tiptoe backwards and my heel is lifted. So a little stretch little stretch. Now here's the thing, I want you to have a little bum clench at the same time. I know, it's, it's, I know, it's my bum. I wished it was smaller, but it's all right. Reach back, have a little bum clench every time you send your leg back. This is a good thing because it's a bit of an awakening that goes on. We're waking up those bum muscles, okay? And we're waking up these muscles into the back of the leg, into the bum. And by doing so, hopefully it's, it's a bit of a pain reducer as well. Okay, in sit, how are we doing? Are we all all right? In sit, um, what I'm looking for is a switch of legs forward and backwards and a roll in and roll out eye gaze forward yeah. there's a little rock yeah good 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 so at this point now i want you warm do you feel warm are we good thumbs up please flush flush so from here, we, we naturally migrate across to um, some um, endurance. So this is about being breathless. So when I talk, I move. As you watch, you move with me. OK, so this is just gentle stepping to start with. The truth is we just want to get those steps in. OK, so it's in. The guidelines are 10,000 steps a day. And on a good day, some days I don't do that. I can be doing lots of things, but I'm on the spot. Why I'm sharing this, this is about increasing your heart rate. And once we've started doing that, you'll notice it's increasing. Some of you might be feeling it a little, but also you might be noticing increased rate of breathing. And that's all what this is about. I'm expecting that of you. Now we're going to take two steps in one direction and then back. So this is the bit I explained about. There's music in my head. Um, and all I'm doing is some sidestepping. The sidestepping, albeit sounds a bit dull and a bit boring, um, is really successful for when you're pottering. 
this is you at home, you're in your bathroom or you're in your kitchen pottering. And these little side steps are really efficient because we're moving, this is challenging balance and increasing your heart rate at the same time. So don't underestimate it and definitely suggest a little bop around your kitchen. Okay, so as I said, this is about endurance. Let's see if we can just increase that heart muscle. And a nice way to do that is to pump the arms. So if we've got all the limbs involved, so legs and arms all working, that will naturally increase your heart rate, okay? Okay, you can do whatever you like with arms, a bit of a birdie dance. I don't mind, I really don't mind what it looks like. It just needs to be more. Lovely. Okay. And to ink, so what will happen is you start to get familiar and comfortable with this rate. So to make it bigger, we can do a few things. So we can make the arms slightly bigger. Or we can make the legs slightly bigger. Or the space wider. So all of these are options to increase the rate of the heart rate and increase the breathing and improve everything else that's going on in terms of lung function and heart rate. OK, so you choose. And the idea is you will be challenged here. We will expect you to go, oh, crikey, when's Pat home? That's what you need to say. Where is she? We put them back, Pat. That's what normally happens. Maggie's laughing at me. Uh -huh. I bet Maggie's laughing at me. So, and the idea is that you're supposed to be challenged. This is okay. It is okay to do this because we are so used to being, feeling self-conscious for our breathing. It's all right. This is normal. This is just your energy systems in your body challenging you to keep moving, whatever that looks like. Now, the good thing is, as we keep going, the good news is your body's starting to remember some of these patterns, so it becomes easier and we become less fearful because your brain goes, oh, the sidestep, I'm used to that. I'll just do more with my hands. The same in sit, so keep going, keep going. I didn't say rest, I said keep going. In sit, same thing. If your legs aren't functioning today, we want to do bigger arms. We can be pumping our feet with bigger arms or with speed. And all of these things are designed to build that endurance, build that capacity, that resilience in our movement. Feeling it? And ironically, this whole thing should last 10 minutes, but it goes just like that when you're with me, honestly. Okay. So, we come down and I just want you to come into a small march in sit, pump your heels for me, okay? Notice your breathing. We're going to stay here until we feel like we're back to when we were before we started this part of the class. So where well, you probably weren't even thinking about breathlessness. So this piece is called active recovery. This is us slowing the breath, slowing the pace, but still moving because we don't want to, we don't want you to feel dizzy because you just stood still. We need you to keep going and just noticing those small changes. Now we're going to go again. So this time we're going to go bigger. All right, here we go. So we're going to pick up that pace. Higher knees or bigger steps, you choose. So this is about setting the intention. There's bigger moves. Adding bigger moves. Let's make it bigger. See, I'm in the mood for dancing. That's what happens every time. That is the song that is connected with this movement. But I'm going nice and big because I want my heart rate to increase. I want my breathlessness to kick in because it's telling me I'm using all the right systems in my body. And I feel good. I'm going wide. I feel strong. My brain has reminded me. I know where I am. 
I feel confident, I feel comfortable. And I know for well in a minute, it's all gonna change and we won't have to work this hard on our cardiovascular fitness. Woo! Nelly done team. Okay, keep moving with the limbs, lower limbs, less so with your arms. So instantly the stress levels will be coming down. Less arms, smaller movements. This is us going. Okay, I recognize I'm still moving, but I'm not as stressed in the movement. Got it? Right, can I have a shaky hand just to make sure that you're still with me? Lovely. Good, 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 good. Excellent. Let's stay here. A few more steps. Just are we back to where we were? before we started endurance. Maybe a few more moments. Got to keep that blood flow moving around the body efficiently. But we're noticeably smaller in movements than we were a minute ago. This is the active recovery that we talk about so frequently. Okay, well done. Okay, so we're going into a wide base of support. Now, if you want to at this point, you can have a sip of water or take a write down a note, any thoughts that come into your mind. Nice thoughts, not when's pat back. <laughs> now we're moving into my favorite exercise because me and Pat really do have our favorites. I love the wide base sway. And I have to say, because I teach Pilates as well, this has come across into so many different types of training that I've delivered over the years. And the reason being, you don't have to be um, attending a falls prevention class to work on your balance. This is something that translates right the way through um, uh, um, what's the lifespan. What I'm looking for here, and I'm using that chair for a bit of support. I know it's there. I'm looking for slow. Step, lift, slow. Step, yes, it starts to smart. I know that. I know that. So this is balance. So balance isn't necessarily... Um, balance is designed to create strength and to get muscles to also work under tension. This one, wide base sway, longer levers, more of a challenge. So longer arms in stretch. Notice I am literally staying here for a few seconds before I put my foot down. And it's anything along that journey. So use the chair. If the chair gives you loads of comfort, then use that. And it will, it, it does ache into your bottom and into your hip. That's telling me that we're using the big muscles to, pro to provide and deliver that balance. But the other interesting thing is when we're in one leg stand, we're actually targeting the muscles that inner thigh into the internal core muscles. So one leg stand is a real beneficial movement. If you feel that you're getting tired now, it's okay to just leave a toe on the floor, but shift weight. So when we fall, it's not from a still position, is it? So when that does happen, it's, it's in odd positions, but often off one leg. So which is why I like to spend so much time in the wide base way. Okay, well done. Oh. Give yourself a little rest, a little wiggle jiggle, because you might notice that your hips are a bit smarty pants by now. Okay, so heel toe walking. We're week 17. Chair is there for your support. This is about taking your time to step heel toe on a straight line, boom, boom, in front of you. So we are flat foot. Every time I step forward, Every time I step forward, my back heel is touch my heel is touching my toe, and I'm not taking that step forward until I feel safe. 
then I'm going to reverse the movement. I feel like a bit of a moonwalk going on here. Now, I recognize this is a challenge. So if you prefer, it is taking very slow steps, one in front of the other. None of this needs to be with speed, just nice and slow. But again, you know, creaky floorboards, that we're gonna walk so quietly and so softly that we're not gonna disturb those creaky floorboards. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to use your octopus arms for balance. It's totally okay to do that. The, the idea behind all of this is addressing those things that concern us. Mm -hmm. People. With seated balance, I like to do this. Now, me and Pat, we talk about variations of this all the time. Holding one leg, switching, holding one leg. That's a really nice thing to do. Lots of thing going on here. Now, if you find this is a little bit too uncomfortable with the top of the hips, try it. So if you're in stand, come and sit and try it. You can also put your back against the back of the chair and try it. But it's not just a lift. It's a lift and hold. Great. Put down switch. Same thing, it's all about just challenging. So we talk about isometric movements. So this is an isometric, muscles are contracting, muscles are holding, holding this leg up in the air. Everything's having to work really hard, pull everything inward, switch. So quite a powerful move. It's exciting, isn't it? Well done. Beautiful. Okay, what else can we do that involves balance? My Nana absolutely swore by tiptoe walking. So feel free to enjoy this. So in sit, it's about putting your weight through your big and second toe, okay? So you can lift up in sit and think about just coming up onto your tiptoes. It's absolutely essential here to strengthen the, the lower limb, back of leg. Okay, in stand, you've got options. So we're week 17, we're progressing now, you trust us. I'm going to suggest using the chair for support and rising up onto tiptoes. Now, if you want to, tiny weeny little steps. Did you see that? Rising up tiny weeny little steps and I use that word in so I go up tiny weeny little steps down up tiny weeny little steps down keep going so in sit in stand think about the variety here to concentrate on the big and second toe is really important because that really helps us to center our balance and that we're not rolling onto the outside of the ankles. Tiny weeny little steps. Tiny weeny little steps. Lovely. So toe walking, essential to balance. But what if we tried heel balance or heel walking? So before we do, Think about what happens when you rock back on your heels. Your booty wants to show itself. So it's okay to use a chair. Lift the toes and down. That's your option. I'm using the chair for support. In sit, absolutely exactly the same. So we're lifting. And what you'll notice is that there's tension on through the front of your shin completely normal if you want to progress heels tiny weeny little steps down same thing tiny weeny little steps got it up tiny weeny little steps tiny weeny little steps now i want you to have a little think those who drive 
doesn't matter if it's automatic or with gears, you would use these muscles here, wouldn't you? Yeah, this is you on the pedals, this, this toe lifting heel into the ground. Okay, in other places, the reason why this exercise is so important is that um, these are your, um, this keeps your feet strong and upright. So we don't get a bit weak and floppy with the feet and ankles. So this is us strengthening here in the shins, keeping the toes up and lifted. So it's protecting the foot because sometimes it is that weakness that causes that little trip. Okay, left out. All right, good stuff. Okay, that's just for me. What I'd like us to do is to um, um, watch. I'm going to step into the diagonal and back, diagonal and forward and back. So step into the diagonal. Can you see what I'm doing? I'm touching my feet in three spots. So I'm going heel toe, together and out, heel toe, toe heel, leg comes together, toe heel. So I'm essentially going like um, in I don't know, triangle type shape. It's trying a different angle. So my feet are wide base of support, diagonal and out and back. One and two and three and four. Roop. Roop. This becomes part of our Tai Chi that we teach. I told you I'd go off piste. We just do this towards the end of the session, um, but I'm actually doing it now because it's really important and it's relative to where we're at. Okay, are we good? Other side, right, diagonal. So let's just practice going out into the diagonal. How does that feel in the legs? Diagonal, boop, out. Hmm. Hmm. I'm conscious that I'm rolling through the feet. This is all heel toe work. Again, all of this can be done in sit. So it's, it's just a pattern. That's all I'm trying to do. And I'm just making you conscious of where your feet are and how your feet are performing and behaving. Landing with the heel, rolling through the foot. Landing on the toe, rolling through to the heel. So it's all about patterning. And as we become more competent and conscious of those movements, our brain relaxes us a little bit so we can focus on all the other aspects. Heel pump for me. Okay, so we've gone through a warm up, we've done some endurance, we've done some balance. Um, we're starting to touch upon three dimensional work, which is part of our adapted Tai Chi. And now what I'd like to do is some leg strength work before we get down and start working towards kneeling on the floor. Okay, so behind your chair in stand, in sit, I'm looking at, for, I'm looking at sit to two stands. In stand, I am looking at sticking the bottom back, and rising up onto tiptoes. Now, if that's all too much, so firstly, watch, have a little check. And, and I know Pat says, look forward, not downward. Just for me, you're holding onto the chair, check knees. If you can't see your toes when you bend your knees, that's telling me your bum is not pushed back. So I need to see the whole of your foot when you look down and you, see, you need to see all of it. If you can't see your shoes, you're not in the right position, it's gonna cause you knee pain, okay? So, bum back. Ladies will get this better than the gents. Ladies, this is you in a public toilet, trying to have a wee without sitting down. You need to just go back rather than come forward, right? Bum back, yeah? I know, see, and I know ladies are um, 
we, we've all been there and we've all been there in those awful toilets where the lock's not working either. Um, so you have to not only worry about sticking your bum back, but hold the door at the same time. That's perfectly reasonable. That's a good movement. Nick, how are they doing? Doing really well. Christine's laughing at you about the public toilets. The public toilets. Yeah, it's true though, isn't it? Oh, and you have to run the gauntlet. And that's, so you keep going. Breathlessness, notice. Things are changing again because we're in strength and you need oxygen for strength work. But the, the reality is since COVID, many toilets have been shut down. It kind of we're loath to go places now because you can't trust where the loo's gonna be and if it's indeed appropriate. So, you know, it is important that we build your confidence so you can have a little hover. Okay, well done. Okay, right. So, so far we've done a whole bunch of own body weight training. So that means that everything we've done, we've not used any equipment at all yet. But I do want to let us have a look at um, um, putting one leg in front of the other and bending the knees, okay? I will show you a sit variation in a moment. What I'm looking for, and Pat talks about this all the time, big step back. You've got your chair for your support, big step back. So it's your toe that will land. Then you bend your knees and sink. Step forward, because we don't want your toes to feel uncomfortable. So it's a big fat step back and a lower. Again, breathlessness is quite common here. I expect that big muscles being used. Shall I teach you a trick? When you step back and lower, clench your bum cheeks on the way up. So give them a squeeze on the way up, okay? So you step back, lower, clench. And as soon as you start clenching on the up phase, you'll shoot up because your big bum muscles, as in, the muscles that are the biggest in your bottom, not that you have a big bottom. The big bum muscles are doing the job they're designed to do. Get you up, okay? Step back, lower, clench and rise. Sit people, as in those in sit. I want you to think about just a little lift. Your bum is just barely coming off, okay? That's really important. So don't worry about what it's called. Little bum lift, lower. Got it? Yeah. So keep going. Two or three more. And then you'll be like, crikey, is it over? No. Oh, it's 11, 11. Magic numbers. Okay. And release. Now, guys, um, catch your breath. Have a sip of water. So now we're going to think about how do we come off the floor? It's all very well and good. But firstly, um, I suggest, let's have a look at adjusting your cameras or your iPads. Do they need to go on a lower level so you can see me? Because I've got to think about, I need to get you on the floor. Mm. So, is it a difficult thing if your computer is higher or can you think about just getting a bit lower? It's just a thought. This is what I want from us today, if we can. So a couple of things. I want us to step back and then slowly bring that knee down, see if we can touch the floor. So Pat for a little while she does a step in actually I don't care I really don't care how you do it what I want is a firm grip of the chair I need to make sure there's big space between front leg and back leg and I want you not to think I want you knee down and oop, straight back up grip step back knee down oop, and straight back up I'd be really happy if you went whoop every time you did it as well, because it's helping you relax. So think about get that knee to touch. I know it's terrifying. I get it. Alternate right leg, left leg. 
um, or it might be that you just touch towards a cushion like me and step forward. Honestly, this doesn't have to be perfect. I just need you to do a little bit more than you did the week before. That's what we're moving towards. If you feel that you could go one knee, two knee, one foot lift, even better. Grab, come back, knee down, other knee down. I don't know. Give it a go. So I don't know what's going on over in um you keep practicing the knee people until you're going on oh, done. Um <clears throat> what I'd like to do with you keep going. Those who are sitting, um, I want to think about what's going on with your legs. So I'd like you to take the band into your hand. Keep going. <laughs> the sit people. I'm looking for straightening off that knee, using the band to support you, and you're stretching the heel away, toe towards the ceiling. The rest of you keep going. Oh. <laughs> I'm always the naughty one. Okay, so it's, it's really good stuff, this. Okay, I'm looking for a straight leg, toe to ceiling, drive that heel forward. Got it? Well done, everyone. Actually, the seated people, you keep going. The, the kneeling people come around and sit down for a second. What I'd like to do is just, I'm coming off camera. I just want a bit of feedback. Are you all all right? Thumbs up. Was that all right? Who got their knee down? Thumbs up for those who got their knees to touch. Good, good work. Who's still terrified of it? Right, okay, okay, that's fine. Look, honestly, it's, we, I, if I got a quid for every time I heard, you can get me down on the floor, but you'll never get me back. Over the years, I have heard that so many times. So much of this is, um, yeah, there's pain. I 100% support you on knee replacements, hip replacements, pain, but there's a lot going on here too, right? So everything we do in these sessions get you to the moment where you can pull yourself or, or um, climb up away from the floor, okay? Everything we do. So once we start to relax into these things, what you'll find is that one day you'll be able to do it and you surprise yourself. So it is, it is about confidence building, and trust in your body that has let you down. Trust in your body that you can actually move forward. I promise. I promise. And um, over the years, we've had some, you know, real challenges with, you know, clients who haven't knelt down for 20 years. Um, very tall gentlemen that have been unable to um, kneel down and they've got there. And when we get you into a kneeling position, then we could do a load more with you, which is really important. So, um, and then um, one of the things is about wrist loading. So if I show you it against the chair, because I know Pat teaches this, this is about either gripping the chair or just putting your hands on your chair as you move forward and back. But what if, what if you were already kneeling on the floor? And you were doing this. Same thing. This is exactly the same thing. But what this does is get you to a place where you could potentially get yourself back into a standing position. That's why we do this. There's method in the madness. So I'd like to move a camera, Nick. Right, I need a wall or um, um, something that you can, um, if, I'm just gonna change the camera angle with Nick a minute. Um, so we're against that wall. So probably that camera. So should be able to, whoop. It's been, been able to see the brown door, yeah? Can you see it on that yeah. one? 
Okay. Can you see me? Can you see me now? Right, okay, now watch. Roll. I'm gonna lower and lift. Got it? See that? Join me. So this is one of my favorite things. I just do anything with my hands, higher and lower, side by side, narrow hands, wide hands, just having a bit of a play with it. Okay, so the idea is um, behind this is to build strength in your chest, arms, wrists. <coughs> Got it? You having a play? So you can do this on your desk in front of you. You can also do it on the chair in front of you. So there's lots of ways. It might be that you could even press against um, your colleague. So hand to hand and press in towards each other. So this pressing is core work. It's chest work, it's shoulder work, um, lowering and lifting. It's all similar muscle groups. It's all really good stuff. But again, it's about building that confidence because as we build your upper body strength, we then put you in a place where you've got the power in your upper body to get yourself off the floor. Yeah? So I like doing a high hand and a low hand and then a low hand, high hand, wide, fingers out, fingers in. And it feels different. I can feel it in my elbows, my shoulders, my chest. I feel it in my wrists, my fingers. So it's everywhere. Oh, and my belly button. I'm feeling it all around my body as I'm lowering and lifting towards the wall. Mm. So, and then sit. Keep going. In sit, I use a similar method by pressing down on one hand onto the chair to try and lift my bottom and then I'll try it on the other side so this is about building that strength knees wide pushing down in the seat um, in between my legs so all of this is about building strength so it doesn't have to be perfect because nobody falls perfectly it's not like oh hang on I'm going to get the textbook out but it's having confidence in all that confidence in all those joints um, that you can get yourself safe. And that's that's the method in the madness. How are we doing? Are you all slightly freaked out by me today? Get the shoulder wriggling going on. Yeah, there's a bit of shoulder wriggling. Yeah, yeah. We'll get to release your shoulders next. Well done. Well done. Don't tell Pat I've just done that because she'll be like, you did what? Right. Right, there you go. Pop that back, pop that back. Okay. So, finally, we get to use a little bit of the bands. I got a really itchy elbow today. Honestly, all morning, I've got the itch on. Right, okay. So, um, one of the other things that has changed for me um, as a falls prevention teacher is my own capability. So noticing that I was getting hand pain um, and my like peeling potatoes, I now see as quite a challenge. So I have to like recruit the family in to peel the spuds for me because I can't hold the potatoes like I used to. Um, and it is those fine motor skills that go offline for many of us. So I get it, I hear you. Okay, so it's made me think um, about programming differently and how we can um, make life easier for you. What I'd like to do is some shoulder work. So a nice thing to do is to start palms down and hands wide, thumbs grip, and then come under. Does that make sense? So I'm kind of wrapping the band around the palm of your hand so you don't have to grip it. And I noticed this really made a difference for me. So what this means is the latex is holding itself. My elbows are now velcroed to my waistline and I'm opening and closing. Now, what we also recognize, you might have a few niggles going on in your shoulders, nice and tall away from the back of your chair. 
keeping your elbows velcroed in as you open and close. Is that it? Um, if you've got slack on your band, that's that's telling me we're not getting the, the resistance in. So this band, your starting position needs to be relatively stretched and then increase the stretch, reduce the stretch. Slow, slow. And then I can feel that kicking in in my shoulder and then straight away my elbows want to move away from my ribs. So slow to open slow to close how does it feel so lots of things that go on in our shoulders another thing we can do is stretch the arms forward okay so the band is still wrapped around open and close so it's not elbow open and close this feels like old-fashioned calisthenics so there shouldn't be any slack ever in that band so I'm super strong, so I can do this, but I don't want slack in the band because that's that's nothing. So, and it's okay if you go one high, one low. Think about your balance. So are you the same height when your right and left hand equal? What does it feel like one high, one low? other side muck around with it honestly again perfection not required it is about moving more how do your thumbs feel are we okay hands feel okay what we can also do is by simply changing where the hands face palms out will feel slightly different to palms in honestly yeah there's loads of stuff we can do here out and stay out, tiny weeny little presses, tiny weeny little presses, tiny weeny little presses. Come on, Maureen. Tiny weeny little presses. This is what I see. I go, oh my God, she's mean today. So I can see your body language, but I recognize the yellow top. Right, there you go. Well done. What if, oh, no, it's not over. What if we took it round our back? However, <laughs> however you want to get there. So it's like you've um, got a towel behind your back. Yeah. Okay. So walk your hands closer together and get that stretch on and then stretch out. Push. Push. Oh, I've got a little tweaky shoulder. Okay. So weirdly, same muscles, opposite actions. So now it feels slightly different. So it might have been comfy on one, um, doing it one way and then less comfortable the other. All normal, one high, one low, do whatever you like, but just do lots of it, okay? We talk about progress, we talk about um, increasing sets and reps, which is really important and valid. I just want you to do loads. And loads more than you did last time you did these. Now, remember, this is recorded. And look for the one that's Helen, week 17, where I do a whole bunch of weird stuff with you. All right? Got it. Rest out. Get ready. Ditch your bands. All right? Oh, right. Stretch you out. Firstly, let's just do this for me. Hold on to your shoulders, uh, opposite sides, hands to shoulders, and just give yourself a little a rewarding hug, a little bear hug. Okay, now remember which hand is which, which hand's the higher, the lower, and then switch. It's really confusing, I know. <laughs> It's not my first radio, by the way. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, the next thing I want you to do is to clasp your fingers and stretch forward to me. So we've got clasp of your fingers and a stretch forward. So this creates a lovely C shape with your back. Feet nice and wide, feel nice and safe. And then release. 
Okay. Can we entwine those fingers and turn the palms to me? How does that feel? Not too uncomfortable. If you can, we stretch out even better, arms up. Um, so I'm blind as a bat here, but in the distance, I can see you all doing that. Arms to sky, lovely, beautiful. Untwine those fingers and sprinkle your hands. Lovely. Another nice thing, if you take your hands behind you now and then just lift your chest so you're squeezing your shoulder blades together. If you want to, you can hold your hands behind your back or hold your hands into your back pockets. Squeeze your elbows towards each other, lift the chest, lift the chin. Chins for some of us. And release. Good job. Okay. I always find the stretch of the leg um, can be a challenge. So I want you to be at the front of your chair, lengthen through one leg, have the other leg bent and shine the soles of your shoes to me. Lots of words. Shine the soles of your shoes. Okay. Now lean in a little. So your toe is still pointing to the ceiling. Here's a thought. What if you turned your toe out? And like, oh, we'll feel that, right? So you might be feeling that behind your knee at the back of your thigh into your back. And then release. Extend. So if I can't see the soles of your shoes, it's telling me you're not listening. Heel down, toes up. So your toe is pointing towards the ceiling. Lean to me a little. So that would just increase the stretch on the back of the leg. Try and relax the front of your leg if you can. And what if we just dialed that toe out a little bit so the toe is turning out? You might go, ooh, fill that up into your booty. Well done, lovely people. Okay, so we bring the feet together. We're going to hip walk forward and back for a few last just, you know, little sprinkles before we're done. So hip walking, and you know how important hip walking is. The whole body is just now all come to a close. It's been lovely and exercised. You're lovely and warm. You're sat, you're comfy, and I'm no longer barking orders at you. Okay, once you're in the back of your chair, I want you to send your hands out nice and wide, squeeze your shoulder blades together. Lovely. Now take your right hand, pop it onto your right shoulder and send your right elbow towards the sky. Walk your right fingers over your shoulder down your back. Now here is a place where you can maybe assist. You might not be able to do this at all. Or you can give yourself a nudge or even hold on to the elbow just to pull it back. And at the same time, here's a nice tip. Lift the chest. Lovely. Send your arm to the sky and just have a little lean out. This will help to release off the side of the body. And then release. Good job. Left hand to me. Sprinkle fingers. Fingers onto shoulders down your back, elbow to ceiling, whoop. Lovely. Again, you might want to hold to increase the stretch or that's as far as you can go today, that's fine. Send your hand up. Well done and release. And we're going to do a short bit about box breathing. And then we're, we're actually done. So sat and settled into your chairs. I want you to feel nice and relaxed. When we talk about feeling relaxed, the first thing is to slow the rate of breathing. <sighs> Lovely. And the breath in is normally shorter than the long breath out. Have a little think about that. So the breath out is much longer. Breathing in. 
time to reward yourself breathing in all the goodness breathing out feel those feelings of success you've done it it's an achievement you're breathing in all the goodness breathing out you're just breathing away any rubbish it's all the good stuff now it's like your little breathing holiday last time as you breathe in lift up through your chest send your arms out wide breathe out slowly bring your palms together breathe in arms go wide breathe out let the palms come together then clap your hands in a circle because that's a round of applause well done lovely people so that's week 17 i'm helen you know where we are when you need us um i'm gonna just scooch a little bit further forward so what happens next is we're going to stop the recording um for your privacy um we stop the recording and then we invite you to chat to us if you want to so well done everybody i'm really really proud of you today <laughs>